Hi YouTube, I've just finished making all of these mutants from the films Basket Case 2 and Basket Case 3. If you haven't seen any of the Basket Case movies, they're really good. Um, the first one starts with Belial, who is the little guy in the basket there. He's a conjoined twin and he gets separated from a guy called Dwayne Bradley in the first movie. And then in the second movie and the third movie, we're introduced to all these other mutants. I'm going to show you how I made all of these step by step, starting just with basic wire armatures. So this was my first stage, just to make these wire armatures. I was fairly thick aluminium wire, just twisted around itself, just to make the rough overall shape of each figure. Some of them are smaller than others. I've tried to get the scales of each figure um, sort of as accurate as I can. Um, it doesn't matter if they're slightly different. And with this project, because I'm making so many of them at the same time, um, I'm not going for kind of perfection. You know, you could sort of spend like a year making one figure and make it absolutely immaculate and perfect. But with these guys, like I say, because I'm making so many, I just want kind of like a, a rough representation of each figure. So you can see here, some of them have got kind of interesting shaped heads and things, and I've made wire... Um, that shows that. You can see my fingers there are all sort of grey because when you work with this aluminium wire the aluminium sort of rubs off on your fingers so you do get very grey fingers while you're doing it. So once all the wire armatures are made the next step is to bulk out the rough shapes of each figure just using some tin foil. What's really nice about this is obviously the tin foil you can squash it and crumple it up and you can really kind of mould with it quite quickly so all of these figures that you can see here probably only took about two hours to get these kind of rough shapes in. I've had all these figures on my to-do list for a really long time and I think the reason I've been put off is just because there are just so many of them. Um, but that is the main reason that I love the films is just because there are so many mutants in one place and just the, the costumes and all of the work that went into making all of the masks and everything must have just taken people forever to do um, and I can really appreciate that when I'm watching the movie and I don't care that you know some of the um, other elements of the movie are not great it's that that really um, draws me to the movie right this is the next stage just going over with some PVA glue and kitchen paper so it's basically like paper mache um, but what I'm using is flooring PVA glue so it's a lot tougher than just normal PVA glue. Like if you put the flooring PVA on just a sheet of kitchen paper and let it dry, and then you try and rip that just one sheet of kitchen paper, it's really hard to rip it. Um, it just becomes really, really tough. So you can see here, I've just done the main bodies. I haven't done um, like the heads of most of them yet. Uh, I haven't done the arms and legs, just the main body. But already they start to kind of take shape a bit more and like I say, they'll be a lot tougher. If you've never sculpted before and you're thinking of making a figure, um, obviously just make one. Don't try making 16 or 17 like I'm doing here. This actually ended up being quite a mammoth project because of that. For all of the detailed parts of these sculpts, I'm gonna be using Milliput. If you haven't used Milliput before, it's a two-part putty. You mix the two parts together and then it starts to set and it sets rock hard in about four hours. Right, at this stage you can see that I've done all of the heads using the milliput. This obviously takes quite a long time to do because there's quite a lot of detail really in the, each head. Um, but you can see it's worth it. And what's really nice about the milliput is that once it is dry, it is really rock hard. So if any of these kind of fall over or anything, nothing's likely to kind of snap off. Um, this is what I like about milliput compared to say oven bake clay and that kind of thing a lot of the polymer clays that bake in the oven are quite fragile after you've baked them but the milliput is nice and strong uh, it's the main reason that i prefer to use this over the oven bake clay right you can see um, how all of these are looking i haven't done anything to the uh, hands yet i haven't made any hands or feet just been concentrating on getting the heads done so at this point, I'm much more pleased with how everything's going and I'm really looking forward to getting them all done so that I can um, get on and paint them. The painting bit is kind of my favourite stage because uh, it's just, you know, when you know that all of the hard work really is done, the painting's a lot easier to do. 
um, and obviously it's the thing that kind of brings them all to life at the end as well. But it's really nice at this stage just to see them all starting to look like the actual figures from the movies. I use a whole range of small tools to shape the Milliput. Um, things like ball styluses, needles, dental tools, um, cocktail sticks, basically anything that I've collected over the years that I can use to make interesting kind of shapes and things in the Milliput. My next stage was just to go over the arms and legs, exactly the same thing that I did before over the tin foil using kitchen paper and the flooring PVA glue. This makes them really tough now um, and it means that they're basically all ready to have their feet added and their hands added. Apart from obviously loving all of the movies and things that a lot of these characters are from, I think my main kind of reason that I'm addicted to making these um, figures is just because you can hold them in your hand and they're so small but they have these like really huge personalities, you know, you can really sort of um, imagine them uh, kind of talking back to you almost and I just had them all down in my studio all on various shelves and they just really look amazing all together as well like just in a huge group of like really kind of interesting <laughs> shaped kind of mutants and weird creatures and aliens and all kinds of things. Right this is what they all ended up looking like with all their feet on and all of their hands. Um, so what I did I didn't just stick the hands on um, I actually made all of the hands separately and all of the feet separately and they've all got little wires sticking out from them um, and that just allows you to then make a hole in the arms and the legs and then just feed the wire up into the hole and I obviously put a bit of um, the PVA glue on there at the same time and that just makes them really really solid. I think if you were just to make the hands and just you know try and glue them onto the end of an arm without the bit of wire um, they would probably just snap off quite easily. So again at this stage to save myself a bit of time I've just made all of the feet basically the same for each figure. Um, same with the hands so it's like a sort of little mini production line making all of the feet and all the hands. Um, it just means like that all of the time that I wanted to spend on them was spent really doing the heads. I wanted them to be the best bit. There are other details I'm going to add to these as well but I didn't want to waste a lot of time trying to get um, shoes and hands exactly as they should be. I've got so many movie creatures on my to-do list that any time I can save is a bonus. Right, this is the next stage, all of the details for each figure. Um, so I've got quite a lot of reference photos that I was working from. Um, some of them were actually stills that I took um, from the movie itself. But you can see I've just tried to kind of match the um, clothes as best I could. Um, you can see here I've left a lot of the white um, showing from the kitchen paper and PVA and actually that's quite nice because it gives a sort of a wrinkly texture and it really can look like clothing and when you come to do the painting and you do a bit of dry brushing you can really bring out a lot of those kind of creases and folds and it really does end up looking quite like um, a fabric kind of texture. At this stage of any sculpt that I do I tend to start getting quite excited because all of the hard work has been done by this point and it's just the painting stage left to do. What's really nice with the painting stage is it can add a lot of kind of realism really quickly. It's a lot faster to do the painting than it is to do the sculpting. Um, and so yeah, I, I just really look forward to this stage of a sculpt. You probably all noticed that I made one extra little mutant there at the front. Um, he's called Lorenzo and he's from Basket Case 2. Uh, he's got quite a big personality and he actually sings in that movie so I felt like I had to add him into this. I'm really lucky because Milliput sponsors this channel and they send me some for free. So this box they sent me recently contains 10 packs and I was able to do all of the 17 figures that you've just seen using just 9 out of the 10 packs. Okay I'll show you what all the figures look like painted. And we'll go through and I'll try and um, name as many of them as I can for you. Um, so this first guy here is called Arthur. Um, he was quite fun to paint. Lots of nice textures on his face. And then the guy next to him is called Mouseface. I think you can see why. Um, I really like how his little kind of suit turned out. He looks quite funky. Okay, and then the next guy is called Charles. With his little blue face and interesting kind of teeth. 
And then this guy is called Leon, the bumpy guy. Good name, I think. Uh, and then this one I'm not sure of, the really tall one with the long neck. I couldn't find a name for her. Um, and then the next guy is called Sydney. Um, he's also called Toofy. I think you can see why. Really kind of interesting um, figure, that one. Uh, then we've got Simon at the back there. Um, and then we've got uh, Wendy, who's also called Brainiac. I think you can see why. That was really good fun sculpting the kind of brain-shaped head. Um, then we've got Fernando, who's also called Half Moon, because of his half moon-shaped face. Um, and then we've got Elise. Um, she's got a really kind of interesting top to her head. Then we've got Cedric. He's got all kinds of sort of weird tusks and things. I don't know what that is on the top of his head, but it's quite interesting. Um, this guy, I don't know the name of, but it's got one of the most kind of unique looking heads of any of the mutants. Um, then we've got Elmo, who's got a lot of noses on his face. I think he's got something like 27 noses. I don't think I sculpted that many. Then we've got Magna, who's also called Miss Mackerel. Um, she's got this really wide shaped mouth. I need to add a few little barbs to her face, but I think I'm going to make those out of little bits of feathers. Then we've got Frederick in the back there. I just did him in his pyjamas. I didn't bother doing a dressing gown just to save myself a bit of time. Then you've got little Hal, who's a guy with loads of arms. Um, then we've got Lorenzo. This one, I really love how he turned out. And when you put him in your hand, he just sits on your hand and he looks really cool. He's actually turned out to be probably my favourite one. Um, and then obviously we've got um, Belial there. I made a separate video on him because I made him a long time ago. So you can check that one out if you get a chance. Um, there are some other figures that I'd like to make from the movies, but a lot of them are just normal um, people like Dwayne Bradley. Um, Granny Ruth. Um, there is a thing called Bernard, which is like a sort of a tummy burster thing. Um, so I might make that at some point. And then also there's a character called Eve, who is Belial's girlfriend. But I want to make her separately because she has lots of little babies in um, Basket Case 3. She's surrounded by little tiny baby Belials. So I quite like the idea of making her and making loads of little Belials to go around her, but that will have to be a video for another time. Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, check out my other videos of other weird movie creatures that I've made, and hit subscribe to see anything that I post in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.